G'day, Starlo here. Welcome to another episode of Stepping Stones to Fishing Success, brought to you by Shimano. And today, I'm literally stepping on stones because I'm going rock fishing. Now, this is a kind of fishing that's got a reputation for being quite dangerous, and it certainly can be if you get it wrong. So I'm gonna give you a couple of safety messages, and I hope you don't mind. To begin with, just make sure you know what the conditions are. Use a couple of good weather apps, check out the swell size, have a look at the tides, and then when you get to your spot, don't just charge straight down to the water. Sit in a safe vantage point for about 15 or 20 minutes and just watch your ledge that you intend to fish. See if there's any swells coming across it. Wear the right clothing and footwear. And I always these days wear an inflatable PFD in case I did end up in the water. If you do all those things and you're a little bit careful about what you're doing, rock fishing can be so much fun, especially if you keep it nice and light like I like to and put a bit of burley in. I'm gonna mix up some burley now. What I've got here is a bucket of old bread scraps. I've been keeping all our old stale bread at home and just sticking it in the freezer. And I've added some water. And I'm also gonna add some of this. This is just green weed or cabbage weed that grows here on the rocks. So I'm mulching all this up because if I just throw the bread straight in dry, it's just gonna float away. All it'll attract is seagulls. But if I turn it into a nice porridge, it'll do the trick. So I'm just gonna throw in a couple of handfuls to start with, and then every time I rebait or go to make another cast, I'll throw another small handful in, just right at my feet where the wave action will break it up and carry it out to the fish. You wanna start a continuous stream of burley that'll bring the fish to you and make them hungry, not feed them too much. Because I'm putting my burley in right here at my feet, I don't wanna cast out too far, I just wanna fish this broken white water where it's coming across the rocks and it gives the fish some cover and it's also where the burley is. So a nice short cast is really all I'm gonna need. There's something. Oh. It's, I don't think it's what we're after. Oh. Ah, well, it is. <laughs> That's a black drummer or a rock blackfish, but it's certainly not the size I was looking for, but it's a good sign that there's a few there in the burley already. So I'll carefully unhook this little bloke and get him straight back into the water. Off you go, mate. Oh, what do we got? Oh, something picked it up on the way in. Ooh. Oh, it's another, it's another drummer. It's a little bit small, that one. It's probably very close to the 30 centimetres, but if they're even close, I let them go. They're always just hooked in the mouth, so they're easy to unhook. And I'll get him straight back in the water. This gear I'm using is exactly my favourite outfit on the beach as well. It's a really light rod. It's 10, 10 and a half foot long, a bit over three metres, but it's extremely light with a light tip. I've only got a 2,500 size reel on it, spooled up with 10 pound braid, and I'm running a 16 pound leader at the moment, about a rod length of leader. It's light gear for drummer fishing, but boy oh boy, you get a lot more bites and hook a lot more fish. You might lose the odd fish, but that's a bit of a trade off and it's so much fun. Oh yeah, oh, oh that might be the right kind, oh, come on, oh, this is where the long rod comes in handy for steering him around the rocks, oh he's a good fish, he's a good fish, oh, oh. <laughs> and then I've got to start looking for somewhere to wash him out, and this little channel here is probably as good as anywhere, well that's what we're after. That's a black drummer, also known as a rock blackfish. One of the best eating fish in this part of the world, believe it or not. A lot of people don't realize that, but filleted and skinned, these are just absolutely delicious. I'm looking for a couple of these to take home for a meal, and I'd actually rather take them home at that size than the big ones. I can let the big ones go. That was too much fun. <laughs> Yeah, oh, did me, like a dinner. Woo, that was a good one. I'm using about the simplest rig you could possibly imagine. It's just a small sinker 
running freely on my leader right down to about a number one to one oh, possibly two oh size hook, just depending on what sort of fish I'm expecting to encounter. This rig is great around the rocks. It's simple to tie. It doesn't snag up all that often, believe it or not. And when it does snag up, you can bounce the rod tip and quite often the sinker banging on the hook will de-snag it. Now for bait, I'm just using frozen prawns this morning. But listen, when you buy your prawns, make sure they're Australian caught or Australian farmed. Don't use imported prawns because they can carry diseases from overseas and introduce them into our marine waterways. Now I like to peel the prawn, so I'm just gonna break the head off and that always goes into the water to become part of my burly trail. And then I just deshell the prawn again. All the shell bits go into the water. They all add to that attractive trail that we're making. Still a little bit frozen this one, but that's all right. And there we go. That's going to be my bait. I could possibly get two baits out of that, but eh, I'm a great believer in big bait, big fish. So let's see. Got him. Oh yeah. Come on. Oh yeah, come on. Oh, he's found a rock. Oh. Come out. Oh. Oh, he found a rock, but I got him out. All right. Oh, oh. Uh, and that's what happens when you're on light gear. You don't get them all. That was a really good drummer, and he wrapped me up in one rock obviously chafed the leader enough that uh, I just couldn't hold him when he went for the second rock, popped the leader. Woo!